Hello guys, today I'm going to talk to you about a case history that I had a few years back. Now this case history is very important to me, It's very it sticks in my mind and I'm never going to forget this. This is not the first time I filmed this video and in fact I've probably filmed this about four times now and the reason is because I wanted to make sure I get this right and I wanted to make sure I do right by the guy that I'm talking about. So. I believe that you can learn a lot from this case history. I have certainly learned a ton from what's happened. Uh, whether you're a patient or a practitioner, I think this is a very valuable case history for you. So this guy came in to see me uh, 2014. He, he came in, he's a 26 year old guy. He came in with knee pain just on the outside of his left knee. Now this was nothing abnormal at this point. He had been doing a half marathon and around the mile 11 mark, he felt pain in his leg. He managed to finish the half marathon and after a week or so, the pain had gradually got better. But then what had happened was the pain started to come back and it got progressively worse and worse to the point where it was constant. I can't remember exactly, but I think it was also worse at night, which as a practitioner is a red flag. So on examination, I palpated his right knee. The right knee felt absolutely normal, felt like every other knee that I'd ever felt. On the left knee, the outside of the left knee where the fibula head sits, it felt unusually large. So at this point, I was thinking, okay, well, what could this possibly be? What I thought at the time was perhaps there was a stress fracture caused from the half marathon, and then during that repair process, perhaps more bone had been deposited, leading to this palpable mass. But anyway, it didn't feel quite right. So I eventually persuaded him, that I think we need to send him for an x-ray. So I sent him down the road to get a private x-ray. A couple of days later, whenever he had decided to go in, that same day they phoned me up and said, we need to send you these results very quickly because it's a matter of urgency. So they sent them over and the report suggested that there was something called an osteosarcoma. An osteosarcoma is a highly malignant type of bone tumor and it's very rapidly uh, growing. It's more common in adolescence, but more and more it's been found to happen in younger adults as well. So I had to unfortunately phone this guy up and say, look, we need to send you to the doctor. He didn't want his results initially to go to the doctor because he was trying to go into the military. And in the military, if you have any sort of history of pain or injuries, they don't usually accept you in. So anyway, we, I, I told him what was going on. I said, look, these results have indicated that you might have a, a type of bone tumor. And what was found was on the x-ray, we could see these things called a sunburst effect. So I'm gonna pull up the actual x-ray now and I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna talk you through it. So here we have an x-ray of this guy's left knee. The top bone you can see is the femur. The one underneath is the tibia. And then the one to the right is the fibula. So what we're looking at here, if we look at this area, we can see the fibula head at the top. And then just either side of the fibula, you can see these things here. They look a little bit like cotton wool. So these are what's called the sunburst effect. And this is what was suggesting the osteosarcoma. So I had to tell him what was potentially found on this x-ray report. And from there, he phoned up his, his family, got admitted to the hospital from where he came. And I didn't really speak to him much after that. About six months later, I managed to get back in contact with him to find out what had happened. And he had obviously gone through many tests, many x-rays, scans, all sorts. And the ultimate decision was to amputate his leg above the knee. The, the development of the osteosarcoma was too far gone and it was decided that they couldn't save the leg. So the best decision was to 
amputate the leg. Which was great, although it was, okay, no one ever wants to lose a limb, but it was ultimately the best decision for him because if it was left, it probably would have spread further throughout the body. So he had his leg amputated, was given a prosthetic. And I have to say, this guy was fantastic throughout the whole process. You couldn't get someone more positive about what was happening. He was determined to get back into sport. He was determined to make the most of what was happening. He actually told me he wanted to try out for the 2020 Paralympics for canoeing or kayaking, which was fantastic. And throughout the rest of this time, he was raising money for charities. He was on TV. He was trying to spread awareness of this serious disease. So this guy was just an absolute hero in my eyes. Then I kind of got back in touch with him over the over the next year or two. And the next time I actually saw him, his he and his mum and dad had come into my clinic to surprise me, which was fantastic. And I saw him and he had his prosthetic leg. And this guy was just so thankful that this had been found. Um, his mum and dad were just so happy that we we discovered it. And then I didn't really speak to him much after that. And then it was, wasn't until a sort of towards the end of 2017 that I got back in touch with him and he gave me the bad news that the cancer had come back but this time was affecting his sternum and was affecting one of the bones in his pelvis and he said that the pain was pretty bad and he was on various different medications he was on uh, I think chemotherapy or radiotherapy possibly both I can't remember so I kind of just followed his journey from there and Shortly after that, he kind of disappeared and I was wondering what had happened to him. So I googled him and the sad news was that he'd passed away at the end of 2017, just before Christmas. And it was just so sad because this this guy was like 26, 27 years old and he had just done so much to try and fight his way through it. But unfortunately, these things come back and and he he lost the battle against the cancer but the reason why i wanted to bring this case to you was because i learned so much from it and i know that he wanted to spread the word about these sort of conditions and he wanted me to do this video and i'd actually sent him a video before and there was just one tiny little mistake in there that i didn't feel quite right putting that video out so this is why i'm doing it again so as a practitioner, what I learned was that if something doesn't feel quite right, there's no shame in referring to someone else. There's no reason why you shouldn't go and investigate further, which is why I sent him for the x-ray. If you're a patient or if you are someone who's suffering from pain, don't be afraid to go and get an assessment. Don't be afraid to go and see a professional, but also don't be afraid to go and get a second opinions. And one thing I haven't mentioned up until now in this video was that he had seen a doctor and he had seen three other physiotherapists, all of who had given him different diagnoses and different treatment approaches. The only reason he came to see me was because he'd moved from where he came from down into London. And that was why, because he wanted to just continue treatment. So he came to see me. So it's not like I had done anything particularly magical or it's not like I had uh, any better knowledge than anyone else. It's just that something didn't feel quite right. So I decided to send him for this x-ray. So anyone could have sent him for an x-ray if they'd have just thought about it or, or wasn't, weren't quite sure. So if you are in pain, go and get seen by someone. If things don't change and you want further opinion, there's no harm in going to see someone else and asking for a second opinion. So I hope this video has been of some use to you, whether you're a practitioner or someone who is suffering from pain. It's a story that I have learned a lot from, and I'm never gonna forget this. And I believe that it's actually made me a much better practitioner as a result. So if you have any questions about this case, or you have any questions about 
injuries or pain or anything else that I do as an osteopath, please put them in the comment section below. If you want to see more cases like this, then make sure you subscribe because in the next few weeks, I will be putting out definitely another one, possibly another two. So stay tuned for more case histories. And until the next video, guys, take care. Bye bye. Guys, I just want to quickly add to this video. I've been in practice for nearly nine years and this is the only case I have seen of this. So I don't want you to automatically jump to conclusions that the pain that you might be in or the patient you might be seeing has something as serious as what I've just been talking about. This is a really rare case and the chances are the most, most pain that you will see in practice or most pain you will experience as, as someone who has pain is most likely going to be a muscle, a ligament, a tendon. Uh, possibly if it's in your knee, it might be a meniscus. So I wouldn't jump straight to conclusions that this is some sort of bone cancer that you might have or your patient might have because guys it really is not that common. I just wanted to make you aware of what I had seen in practice and I just wanted it to kind of be something a bit more interesting than just the sort of standard musculoskeletal muscle pain but most of the things I see in practice are muscles, ligaments, tendons, um, referral from, from nerve pain um, or things like uh, cartilage damage, arthritis, all the common things. So don't go automatically assuming that worst case scenario. Anyway, guys, I'll see you next one. Bye.